Hey guys, welcome back to Feed the Wolf podcast. In this episode, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Mr. Brian Barajas here from Black Wolf CrossFit. Brian has attended multiple workshops at Noted, which is a paper goods store located on Lawrence Street here in Houston, Texas. I had the pleasure of attending one of these workshops with Brian, and the workshop we went to was entitled Empower Your Intuition. Now, this was held by Miss Jess Bubico, who is an intuitive psychic medium and will actually be joining me on this podcast in the future. But during this episode, Brian and I unpack our experience together and dive into the ways that we are learning to tap into our very own intuition. Hope you enjoy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Feed the Wolf podcast. Today, I am sitting down with Mr. Brian Barajas. (laughs) He is from Black Wolf CrossFit. And today, we're going to be talking a little bit about this cool experience we had together. So, Brian actually invited me to a workshop at this place called Noted, which is in um, the Heights area? The Heights. Okay. On Lawrence yeah. Street. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and um, it was an Empower Your Intuition workshop by this woman named Jess Bubico. And so we took this on together. And Brian actually last minute invited me to attend because he had a friend, right, who kind of dropped out. And so I was like, all right, cool. Like, this sounds very intriguing to me. So it was a great experience. It's something that we want to share with you guys and so, Brian, what, what kind of initially made you want to sign up for this workshop? Um, I mean, I was just um, in, at Noted, and I noticed that they had this new workshop, and I've always kind of been interested in these types of topics. Um, even growing up, when I was in middle school, um, you know, my, my mom liked this uh, metaphysicist, um, Connie Mendez, from Venezuela, and um, she would give me her books, and so I would read them, and I was kind of interested in this topic it's been quite a while obviously since middle school um so maybe it was you know just the right time to get back and with my intuitive self yeah yeah I mean I think the the word intuition itself is kind of like intriguing for people because maybe they don't necessarily know like what exactly that is or what it should kind of mean to them and so I know I saw you posted like you've taken multiple workshops at noted right yes what were the last ones that you uh, I took a hand lettering one. Um, there was a therapeutic journaling one as well. Um, so I kind of started journaling in the evenings as kind of a way to help me um, process my emotions and just kind of self-care. Yeah, yeah. And I saw like you were posting on your Instagram about it and you posted about this one coming up and I remember reaching out to you like, oh, that looks super cool. And so I'm really happy that we were ultimately able to do this together. What were you hoping to get out of it then? Like, I think we both kind of went into it as far as like, oh, I don't really know what to expect. Like, I'm kind of unsure, like what really even is intuition. And so um, I guess what were you hoping to get out of it then? Really, for me, it's, um, I guess, you know, the critical voice that we have inside ourselves that sometimes it's like, oh, it's a bad day. Oh, you know, things are going wrong. And and sometimes that kind of gets into the way when you're trying to listen to, well, what should I do with my day? What should I do? Um, and so just maybe try to help um, learning something that can help me manage that um, for myself and being able to say, oh, this is what my intuition is trying to tell me versus this is what the stories that I'm creating inside my head that are creating like this negative perspective, negative story that may or may not be true. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I had kind of the same the same hopes going in because I know like for me I have a lot of anxiety and I feel like sometimes that kind of gets in the way of maybe my intuition or I'm not really sure if the things I'm thinking or feeling are coming from like a negative place and you know getting in the way or if I should maybe be listening to those so that was kind of what I was hoping to get out of it as far as like maybe some skills as to how to even like listen to your intuition because sometimes especially if they're negative it's like Am I being paranoid? <laughs> exactly. How yeah. do you know when it's true and when it's just, you're just being negative? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially in this society, like everything, you know, we're basically wired to go to the negative or think negatively. So it's hard to kind of know, like, am I being paranoid? Like what's going on and kind of filtering those thoughts and using those. So that's what I was kind of hoping to get out of it. We won't unpack our total like two hour experience, but right. kind, of, <laughs> kind of just the bigger takeaways. Um, so the next kind of piece we went through was the four different types of clairs. 
And basically this was, again, how we are able to access our intuition a little bit more. So there was four different types, which is kind of like, I guess, four different senses instead of the five senses. <laughs> but um, so one of them was clairvoyance, which is kind of like seeing. So receiving images, um, you know, having vivid or dreams, seeing auras or colors, basically vision. The second one was clairsentience, which was clear sensing or more of like feeling emotions, getting strong gut feelings, picking up on thoughts and emotions of others, those kind of things. The next one was clear audience, which was clear hearing. So listening to spoken messages, maybe hearing ringing or buzzing in the ears, those kind of things. And then the last one was clear cognizance, which was just kind of like, I just know, I don't know why, but I just know. <laughs> And so there were these four kind of types of um, clairs or ways to tap into intuition. And I know for me, when Jess was going through these, there was definitely one that really stood out to me. And she said that we have the ability to access all of these. And the more you practice, the more you're able to. But for you, like kind of what was your experience when she was tapping into these? Like, did you identify with any of them or what kind of clair do you think that you were? So for me, I was just listening to all of the different types and I was just trying to remember, recall like instances in my life, um, you know, where, you know, that's definitely resonated or happened to me. But um, I just feel like, I don't know, um, I've listened, I think that really critical inner voice kind of has been getting in the way for me. And I didn't really connect with one more than the others but you know Jess did share that um, we all have the ability to access all four of these so it's not like if you only um, recognize one that you have you know experience with it's not like you can't access the other three um, so I just think um, I need to you know start maybe meditating more <laughs> tapping into my intuition and you know see she did share that she thinks I'm uh, I have clairsentience uh, which is the sensing one, um, empathy. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually took a quiz. Um, I started reading a book on intuition after the workshop last week. And oh, cool. um, I think um, uh, it, based on the quiz, I'm supposed to be empathic. Um, okay. Um, so maybe that's the one for me. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely the one that I identified with was the clairsentient one, which same as you was the, the feeler because I know for me, like... I get anxious when like there's a messy house or at least I'm very sensitive to like energy around me, whether it's being like in a crowded grocery store, like I get super freaked out <laughs> or just kind of like being good at reading the room, reading people's energies, picking up on like thoughts of and emotions of others when I'm just in the room with them without them kind of like verbalizing it. And even just like feeling those emotions that others are experiencing. So for me, that was definitely like the standout one for me, which kind of helped. But I think what you're saying about like not really knowing, like that's okay too. And I think a lot of people actually listening to this will identify with that because maybe, you know, maybe that inner voice is in the way or maybe you haven't actually spent a ton of time, like maybe in meditation or not really knowing that you have experienced intuition, maybe even if you have, or you didn't know you were. So I think it's okay that you like a hundred percent weren't like, Oh, this one's my one. And like, didn't have that moment because then you get to play around. And as she said, you know, you get to practice each of these and practice tuning into each of them. So I think that's cool. And I think that's great that you're already like reading a book and yeah, absolutely <laughs> getting after it. Um, so with that being said of like, sometimes having that struggle to know if it's intuition or not. Do you feel like you've ever had a specific moment or event in your life where you felt your intuition was there or like maybe used it to make a decision or anything like that really? Um, so I don't really have any like big examples of this, but definitely there's been like interesting like coincidences in you happen that you know may or may not be my intuition it's probably my intuition but like I said you know, it's difficult to recognize when it is um like you know when I was on vacation last some uh, last month last summer uh, in London um I decided to write um postcards um to this person that I'm dating and I always wrote a haiku um in each postcard um, just kind of I don't know it was a thing I just decided to do it on day one and when I went to the British Museum, they were doing an exposition on Japanese haikus. 
Ooh. And I was just like, how is it that I'm writing these every day and I come to the museum yeah. and they have an exhibit on it? So just things like That's that. That's kind of like a sign, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like when you're at least kind of aware of those things, you're able to pick up on that because maybe someone else who hasn't really done the self-work or like reflection may have just been like, oh, that's just like a stupid coincidence. But I think it all comes down to like what you're open to and what you believe in, because I think we all, you know, we all carry around energy. And I like what she was saying about the thought bubbles as well. Right. Of like carrying around thoughts and like, have you ever had one of those moments where you're like, I knew you were going to say that kind of thing to somebody like that. We have these thought bubbles around us as well as these energy bubbles and emotional bubbles. Um, I mean, is that kind of something you believe in as well? The, the thought bubbles? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I don't have any like very like um, specific uh, moments that stand out, but I think that there's definitely, we all have those times where it's like, you know what? I was just about to say that even though it's something <laughs> as simple as like, um, I don't know, uh, where do you want to go have lunch today? And all of a sudden, like, you have the same idea. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, oh, that's what I was thinking. Um, I actually really enjoyed, so kind of going back to this workshop we went through, um, I don't know for you, like, do you already go through, a med have a meditation practice that you go through or not so much right now? I don't. Um, definitely is something that I need to work on. Um, you know, I started the year being doing this like level 10 thing where it's like you're trying to balance every part of your life and you know mind and spirituality is part of it and um I, I basically need to work on it I need to set up something find out something that works for me um and then just be consistent well that's the biggest thing I think is finding something that works for you because not everyone's able to sit and meditate for 15 minutes a day <laughs> I know I can't because that's where I tr like started with mine and all of a sudden I'm like five minutes is better for me because <laughs> Otherwise, I just get kind of stressed out. But I actually really enjoyed the meditation that she put us through. She put us through a couple different ones. Uh, but there was also a moment that we had to kind of write down things that we feel like were ways to connect back to ourselves. So kind of the idea behind this was like, all right, maybe I feel like, like you were saying, the inner critics coming out or maybe those negative thoughts are coming through what are some ways that we can kind of connect back to ourselves? And so for you, like, what were some of the things that you wrote down? I wrote down, like, writing, um, just, you know, breathing, you know, like, closing your eyes, like, basically meditating um, and singing or just, like, music. Because um, obviously I have this very strong connection with music. Um, and that's just seems to bring me calm and peace. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was kind of similar and not so much the, the music stuff, but for me, it's kind of like being outdoors in nature or moving my body through exercise or some sort of relaxation, whether it's like a bath or reading or even just like driving in the car, singing like really loud to myself. Hey, that works. <laughs> <laughs> but like focusing and having these things that you're able to go to, to connect back to yourself when you're having those moments of negativity or maybe that inner critics coming out. I think that was a really beneficial thing that she kind of talked about about like moving that energy out when you do feel it there and I mean there's a lot of different things that we experienced in this workshop I know I really enjoyed it and I'm hoping to actually sit down and have Jess on this podcast as well to kind of explain a little bit more about what she does but what was kind of your biggest takeaway from the workshop Brian what do you what do you think I think one of the biggest takeaways for me was just to be more open in general. Um, and when you're trying to, you know, talk to your intuition, to ask questions, ask better questions, ask open-ended questions, instead of saying, you know, should I do A, B, or C, and ask, you know, what's in the highest and best interest of this situation? Um, and just being open to what your intuition and to what the universe um uh, Jess calls it Gus, you know, God, the universe, or the spirit, um, and what, what can they lead you to? Yeah, I really enjoyed that, too, of, like, asking those questions, like, kind of getting rid of the, the question of, like, what should I do? What do I have to do? What do I need to do? And kind of, like you said, replacing those of, like, what's in my highest and best interest? What allows me to connect to who I am? What expands me and allows me to step into my purpose? Like, Questions like that are, are going to help you tap into your intuition a little bit more as well. Um, but is there anything that maybe after this workshop now, like I know you said you're already reading that book, 
but anything else you're going to maybe work on or change moving forward after having this experience? Um, I mean, I definitely, I actually finished reading a small book and I'm on to my second book after the <laughs> workshop. Um, so I'm definitely just trying to apply what I'm learning, um, trying to spend more time meditating, um, practicing, I guess, trying to tap into my intuition more um, and just trying to be more conscious about when you are, you know, below the line, when you're in that state, when you're being bonging on a certain issue and, you know, you're not sure, um, you know, you're under stress, you're under fear, um, you're under anxiety and how to bring yourself above the line, you know, to that higher, higher self. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the thing with this is like, it's not an easy, like, okay, here, do this. And now you're going to be able to listen to your intuition. <laughs> and I know we both still left with like a lot of questions. Um, cause I mean, she only had two hours. It kind of covered of this huge thing. Um, but you know, she had a quote in there actually. And it was like, intuition is like a muscle. The more you flex it, the stronger it becomes which we can obviously relate to via CrossFit. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but but that's just the thing with all this, not only intuition, but self-care, self-growth, mindset, whatever the heck you want to call it. Like there's no quick fix on it. And it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of practice. Like even just think of how many years you spent creating the habits that you have now and, you know, the, the go-to things or the negative things you think about now or like for me, how long you spent like – you know, not liking your body or whatever it may be. And now just like you have to put in the years and the practice and of the course. time to like undo all that. Yeah. I know it's not going to happen overnight. I know it's going to take, you know, years, months. Um, but, you know, it's just taking that first step, you know, learning what are those things that help you connect with your intuition that bring you above the line um, and just doing it consistent and, you know, getting better at it every day. Yeah. So I think for anyone kind of listening today, like if you, if you take anything from our little experience that we shared with you on empowering your intuition, like maybe just a great place to start would be coming up with those things that you feel may help you connect back to your best self. So like for us, it was, you know, for me, it was moving outside for Brian, it was kind of the music singing, that kind of stuff, like whatever it may be, maybe just start by thinking about or jotting down, um, ways that you feel that you're able to connect to yourself and then kind of just reflect on like, how do I feel like maybe I do receive intuition? Think back to those four clairs. Like, do you see it? Do you sense or feel it? Do you hear it? Or do you just kind of know? And then I think that's kind of a good place to start. Or if you're super interested in it, maybe check out that human design. I know that was something that was really intriguing to me or, um, like I said, in the future, Jess will be on the podcast as well, and we can kind of pick her brain a little bit more on intuition. But uh, thank you, Brian, so much for, first off, inviting me to this <laughs> intuition workshop with you. I uh, really enjoyed it. And then, of course, we're sitting down on the podcast and kind of sharing your experience with everyone. Um, if there is there any way that people can kind of connect with you further, where should they find you? Um, I guess Instagram. Um um, my handle is pretty long. <laughs> it's my last name, my first and last name, Briancito Baraja. So, um, maybe, um, you can share it on your yeah, podcast. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll tag it in the comments below, but thank you so much. Uh, I really enjoyed having you on and enjoyed experiencing this with you. Thank you for having me. Thanks guys. Have a great rest of your day.